ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! Good morning, everybody. You're tuned into to Hope for Philadelphia on this Sunday, June 21st, 2015. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Right now, we have Buddy joining us from The Rock Ministry. How are you? Great. Good, good. Now, we're just going to have to ask you some few questions and get to know you a little bit in The Rock Ministries as well. Is that all right? It's fine with me. So, uh, when did the boxing, when did the ministry begin? And has it always been a boxing ministry, or was it a ministry that incorporated boxing at a later time? Yeah, it actually begun uh, in, I would say, probably like, uh, let's see, 2001, and where God placed it on my heart to, to really uh, do something in the inner city for kids because I was going into, a, into a, the prison system at the time, and... Uh, I was giving a Bible study to many of the kids that were in there, and I was thinking uh, it was seventy percent of the kids in there were in there for homicide, and I'm thinking how can I be more effective on the on the street block as opposed to the prison block, and mm -hmm. uh, it was at that point in time that I that I was I, was, I used to be a fighter many many years ago, and so I used that as as bait to bring the kids in to share the gospel. So now, on average, about how many youth are impacted and changed for the better at this ministry on an annual basis? Well, it's hard to say how many will be impacted over a lifetime because we're over 8,000 kids who come through our doors, and we've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of decisions for Christ. But it's like a seed. When you plant a seed, it takes time. But, you know, we have uh, folks, kids who come to this ministry who are now police officers. We have kids who were, uh, were, were, were slinging drugs on a block who are now uh, preaching the gospel. Amen. You know, we have kids that were, you know, dropping out of high school and now graduating and in college. We have kids now that we're marrying. I'm marrying some of Amen. our kids now and they're having children, so. How does the ministry operate on a weekly basis, referring to church service schedule, training days, Bible study hours, etc.? On a weekly basis, how does this ministry operate? We have activities seven days a week. Uh, Mondays and third, or, or Tuesdays and Thursdays is for uh, our, our kids to come in from the com, from the community, and they that's how we're open to the community. From we start at four o'clock to eight. Now, you, you, the kids have to earn other days to get in. So, so Mondays is strictly for girls boxing. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is for uh, the young boys to come in, and then we have an open day on Friday. So we have things going on Saturday. We have many things activities. And of course, we have church on Sunday. Now inform us on who is the founder of the ministry and go into details as how he began as uh, ministering and getting the ministry together. Well, I, I'm, the, I'm the, God placed it on my heart to start this. So I guess I, I think God's the founder. I'm the co-founder. <laughs> so, Amen. So, but uh, yeah, it was just, it, I, I was born and raised in Kensington. And uh, so I understand the culture very well. And and I've seen, you know, kids. We're in a, we're in probably one of the poorest sections uh, in the in the country. You know, we're at the poorest congressional district in the country. We see 50% of our kids experience have experienced hunger pains before going to bed at night. I mean, we've seen. You know, this is the Kensington Avenue. Kensington is known for its prostitution. It's known for its drug dealing and its drug uses. So we we're right in the mix of where um, where God would want us to be. Nice, nice. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's uh, it can be difficult at times, especially in a community like this, to pull kids and, and encourage kids that, you know, um, that there is a better. You don't always have to stay in poverty if you just trust in the Lord that there can be a better. No doubt. You know, no doubt about it. Yes. So you as the founder, um, were you ever trained boxing at a young age? You yourself, were you ever tr taught boxing at a young age? If not, were you ever taught later? Like exactly what time in your life were you taught boxing? Well, I was 13 years old when I had my first amateur fight. And by the time I was 22, I had 90, 90. I represent the United States of America in the USA boxing team. I traveled the world. I was slated for the 1980 Olympics, uh, but I was, it was a boycott at, at the time, so I, I didn't get an opportunity to go there. But uh, I'm the uh, city, state, uh, region Golden Gloves champion as a kid many, many years ago. Wow. So, I mean, I, it, it's my background. And now I'm actually, we have uh, some of the best um, 
fighters in the city right now. We have one of our kids who, since he's been 13, has been coming here. He's now a, he's 23, he just turned 23. He's a police officer, just became a police officer. And he's also a highly decorated amateur boxer. Now he's a professional, he's 4-0, and and he'll be fighting July 17th. Wow, that is nice. Um, where were you taught boxing, and if and and, and with who? Uh, who was well, your trainer? Well, you know, I was trained by. Uh, I started out around the corner here uh, at uh, it was called uh, uh, Henley's Boys Club. It's now Front Street Gym, and I uh, was trained by a guy named of Red's Torpy. And then my uh, Olympic trainer was uh, another guy by the name of Steve, and he. Yeah, he, he took over my career from there. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, you're tuned into Hope for Philadelphia, WPEB 88.1 FM. We're going to hear more from Buddy at the Rock Ministries, but first, let's play this song on Father's Day. We'll be right back. Well, we had the idea, you know, basically we started Rock Ministry um, uh, about six years ago. F actually, five, we started Rock Ministry about five years ago. In the summer of 1996, Buddy and I met on a missions trip to the far east of Russia. We were going into uh, juvenile prison camps, and, and out of that trip uh, to Russia, we started, came back to the States, and we started going into the... Uh, prisons in the city of Philadelphia reaching out to juveniles at risk. Paul and I were doing a Bible study on a prison block and I asked the kids when was the first time that, that they heard of, about Christ, about Jesus, uh, and who was the first person who told them about Christ and, and a couple of them raised their hands when I said was, your, was it your mother? We started going into the House of Corrections over on State Road and we were again ministering to young men um, at risk. This time these were men who were in prison, young men under the age of 18 uh, committed adult crimes, murder, rape, armed robbery, uh, carjacking, things of that nature. And then another, and I said, how about your grandmother? And a couple more hands went up. And I said, well, listen, how about your father, who was the first, and not one hand went up. And that gave, that gave us just the, the, the passion and the desire to really uh, to make a difference in the neighborhood of Kensington because we thought, listen, there's nobody teaching these kids, you know, about the life saving message of Jesus Christ. in this location, 2755 Kensington Avenue, for nearly four years, just coming up on four years now. December 31st will be our fourth anniversary. Right now, Rock, Rock Ministries is, is situated just yard south of, of Kensington and Somerset. This is one of the worst corners in the United States of America. It's, it's, it's been deemed by some as being the number one drug corner in the whole world. And as I look at that, I, I, just, I just think how honored and humbled I am that God would allow uh, myself, Buddy, Rock Ministries to be planted right in this area where so many people are so empty, so full of sin, so so desperately lost. And here God has said, you know, I'm going to take you, you men 
and I'm gonna put you right in the middle of this area, the worst area imaginable. I'm gonna put you right there, and I'm gonna glorify myself in this neighborhood through you. This is where we wanna be, and, uh, and this is where our, our headquarters is. Over the last four years, this December, we actually, over the last three years, we have seen 2,000 uh, 2, kids come through our doors. And as a result of that, we've seen, we've seen hundreds of kids make decisions for Christ. And we see many kids literally, at, you know, their lives have trans been transformed by the Word of God. Okay, we're here at the Rock Ministries. They are, our, they are our special guests for this 2015 Father's Day tribute. Thank you for joining us. So let's go into detail more about the youth here at the ministry. Explain about some, if not all, of the youth. Where do they come from? Um, give some of their testimonies as to what inspired them and encouraged them to join the ministry. Well, one of the things, we, we're Rock Ministers of Philadelphia, so we're, we're not uh, just exclusive to Kensington. It's it's the city. We're, 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 part, we're, we're, we're situated right where the L is. So we have kids come from West Philly, Southwest Philly, South Philly, uh, Northeast. Um, uh, I don't know where they come from. I, I just know that over a period, that we're 12 years in ministry now, that it's just people know that we're here. Um, they're attracted to sports, which is boxing, but it's, boxing is debate, as I said. Well, we have grapple now, we have kickboxing, we have after school class, we have homework club, we have art class, music. Uh, we have a, a, a variety of different um, uh, ways to, to reach the children. We don't charge one cent, everything is free. Nice. And uh, so we, we, we enjoy it. Amen. Now, uh, based on race, color, creed, nationality, gender, culture, and religious denomination, um, for those who do not know about your ministry, explain how your ministry fits in each of those descriptions. Well, we don't, have, we don't discriminate against anybody. I mean, anybody, you know, Jew, Gentile, Muslim, it don't matter. You come on in, you know, Rastafarian, Mormon, Jehovah, we don't just come on in. We, we, we you know, Christ, uh, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him shall never die, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. And, and, and so that speaks to everybody. Amen. So you did, you did mention that uh, not only male, uh, not only do you train male, but you also train female. Yeah, it wasn't my desire to have females. I, I was only wanted to reach young inner city kids because of my past history. And uh, I got caught up in my life and, and spent many years in prison. And uh, so it was, I was just wanted to reach the youth, the, the young boys. Now we started a church five, six years ago. So now the girls are here and I'm, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful experience. To your knowledge, are any of the youth a part of this ministry, fatherless, motherless, foster or adoptive? Nine out of 10 uh, young kids, um, typically in the urban setting, uh, comes from a fatherless home. Uh, most of our kids here have, have uh, come from a fatherless home. Yes. Okay. Um, have any of uh, have any of the boxers who are or who were at this ministry ever became professional boxers? Yes, we have one right now who is a uh, uh, has a hottest prospect in the city right now, and he's uh, as I said earlier, he's a uh, currently he just got out of the academy five months ago, and he's a Philadelphia police officer. Yes, but we have one, and we also have. Uh, the two-time cruiserweight champion of the world who trains here as well. And uh, he is getting ready to fight on August uh, 14th um, for, the, for uh, working his way towards the heavyweight championship of the world, Steve nice. USS Cunningham. Say his name one more time. Steve USS Cunningham. Okay, great. Congratulations to both of them, and, and congratulations he, to you as well yeah, for yes, having them. Yes, yes. Um, so now, uh, have you ever met, have you personally ever met any professional boxer or have any professional boxer, uh, well-known boxer, ever came here into the ministry? Well, I just finished uh, the, the, the movie uh, with the Rocky movie, so I was, uh, uh, had a pr principal role in the Rocky movie. Now, he's not a real boxer, but he was, he's a trainer. But we've had many, you know, uh, world champions and, and people of notoriety come through our doors here, and I've met you know, Marvis Fraser is a very dear friend of mine as well. I knew, I met so many 
professional fighters of my life that, that are work champions and our current champions. Yes, Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone is uh, very known, yeah. especially uh, in Philadelphia. Yeah, especially in Kensington. In Kensington, yes. I went to, um, I went to, uh, I traveled back and forth once a year to Miami, Florida, and uh, when I say I'm from Philadelphia, every, the first question they asked me, well, number one, they asked me about our cheesesteak. They say, oh, if I go to Philadelphia, all I want is, you know, to taste your cheesesteaks. I'm like, that's it? You only want to come to Philadelphia to try our cheesesteaks? And then the second question they ask us is, um, or they ask me, is, have I ever met Rocky Balboa? I'm like, um, I've seen him. I have seen him um, at the Italian market, but I never actually got a chance to get to him. By the time I got to him, he, he was gone. Um, but, yeah, that's a very frequent, frequently asked question is, have I met <laughs> Rocky Balboa? Um, <laughs> So we're going to go into another song here on Hope for Philadelphia, and we'll be right back with Buddy at The Rock Ministries. We've seen, we've seen hundreds of kids make decisions for Christ, and we've seen many kids literally, at, you know, their lives have trans been transformed by the Word of God. I like Rock Ministries because it keeps you occupied. Um, it's a nice environment to be in, and it's a house of God, first of all. We teach the gospel here. Uh, what I like about the Rock is the gym, but I especially like uh, the Bible studies and stuff, like when we go up there and talk about God, and that's what I especially like about the gym. I love coming to the Rock because it just feels like I'm with my family here. I, most thing, the most thing I love about the Rock Nike is, is that they take people off the street just because, just to entertain them and introduce them into the life of God, meaning Jesus. And is it we we have much activities here. We box, we do UF, we UFC, we grapple, we have uh, we we lift weights, and it's just a great. We may have a great time here. I just love being here. Uh, I basically like the rock because it's my home away from home. Like any stress I'm going throughout the gym, I come home, uh, come to the gym and um, take it out on the bags and. When I'm not taking out on bags, spending time with the Lord, and making myself a better man. Well, basically what I like about, about Rock Ministries is that when you do something here, you learn from your mistakes. Like, you're not, it's not a street way, it's a Jesus way. And I love Jesus myself, so usually when I'm not home, I'm here. And when I don't have no school, I'm here. I'm here to learn about Jesus Christ and work out and become the best boxer there ever was. What I like about the Rock Ministry is that like the Bible studies, they help like young kids get off the streets. And we believe as we move forward, despite the violence that goes on, despite the killings that are taking place, despite the prostitution that's going on, despite the anger and hostility that people feel, we believe that, that, that the Word of God will, will, will be paramount in, in, these, in the lives of these young kids. I like coming to the Rock because it keeps me from doing bad things after school and also because I could come to the Rock and listen to the Word of God to be a good boxer, learn how to defend myself. That's why I like coming to the Rock. Okay, we're here with Buddy from the Rock Ministries. Continuing our interview, uh, most of us, especially myself, we want to know, um, did you and or anyone from the ministry watch the current recent championship game that went down in history, which is the Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather match? 
Yeah, I, I watched it. Yes. What do you think about it? Well, I mean, uh, I thought it played out uh, the way it was supposed to play out. I think that you know the IQ that uh, Floyd Mayweather has is phenomenal, and uh, I think that um, I mean, my heart, I wanted to wanted Pacquiao. I was rooting for Pacquiao, but you got to give it to Mayweather. I mean, he he um, he shut him down completely, and uh, is, he's, he's he has a just a dominant force that he displays and skill. He does. He does. I kind of agree with you there. I uh, I personally was rooting for uh, uh, Pacquiao yeah. as well from the from from the beginning. Um, I don't. I personally don't really get into sports that much, um, but you know I do enjoy watching boxing. And uh, again, I was voting for uh, Pacquiao, yeah. but unfortunately, you know Mayweather has yes. uh, has a uh, more. He was over. He was yeah. over. Uh, uh, you know Pacquiao. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So what was your favorite part about the fight? Well, it wasn't so much a, a part that I, that, I, that I looked at. You know, you look at the whole fight. You know, I think the build-up to the fight it was something I was looking at. Because what, what happens the, the, the week before any championship fight, they call it, the, you know, the fight week. And you see people's nerves change and people's countenance change. They get mean. They get nasty, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I was watching... The, all the fight, it seemed like Pacquiao was extremely happy and smiling, and just he just seemed like he was enjoying himself, which made me believe, you know, when you enjoy what you're doing, you, you're going to come out victorious. But I was totally <laughs> surprised at the, at, the, at the outcome. Okay. Um, now, was there any part within a fight or within the uh, beginning of the fight? Uh, was there any part at all that you did not like, or do you think should have been better? No, I think the fight was it was entertaining for me to watch. For it had me, it, it kept me interested because whenever you have a guy that's uh, that has a lot of output with his punches, as such as Pacquiao, you know, and I, I thought that he, you know, that he was going to throw way more punches. So I was waiting each round for him to turn up the heat and just uh, to, to apply that pressure, but it never happened. I, I kind of agree with you there. Uh, most of us, at least the, at least the people who, have, who I've communicated with, most of us uh, during a fight was screaming at our television, throw more punches, throw more punches. Yeah. Um, so now let's go and, and talk about the judges just a little bit. Do you believe that the judges play fairly? A lot of people on social media was, was uh, uh, making comments such as, um, Pacquiao really did win, and just that the judges played unfairly, or the judges was paid got paid money to uh, to score higher for for Mayweather. Um, what, what do you think just, about just based on what I saw, I, I was convinced that Mayweather won the fight hands down. So I don't really play into that. You know what? I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but if you know anything about boxing and you have a reasonable mind, you look at the fight, you understand it that Mayweather won. Oh, sure, Mayweather, he moved around, but that's how he does. He, uh, you know, uh, Pacquiao chased him down, but he chased him down with, with just walked, he chased him down, but he didn't get behind it with his hands, you know. So I thought the fight was scored properly, and uh, I was okay with it. We, a lot of people paid a lot of money for pay-per-view. A lot of people uh, got really anticipated and really well, excited. I, I mean, look, you think I, can't, I, I, think, I think you can't, I, you can't, like, Look back in hindsight and say, "Well, I should have never, I should have never purchased that fight because the fight didn't live up to your expectation." You have to go into that fight and say, "Okay, I want to watch this, whatever, whatever it is." I mean, for people to to kind of sue, you know, I, I don't understand that that mentality. I think that's more, you know, that's that's more of a. a, a I just don't agree with that. People suing because they didn't live up to their expectation, right. you know. Uh, I, you know, it was a, a brilliant business uh, venture for the promote the promotional company, the, the athletes, and I mean, I think it's the highest paying venture in, in, in I mean, in, in the history of sports. I think it's like eight hundred million dollars. I think it's it's so crazy numbers. Yes. And when everything's all said and done, but that's that's entertainment. <laughs> that's entertainment. Um, okay. Now moving on to our next question based off of a boxing mixed with Father's Day, um, Mayweather stated before the fight that if he had won the fight, he would give money to his children. And going into the next section of this question, of this interview, today is Father's Day, 
I wanted to know if you're a father biologically. Do you have any biological children? Yeah, I have uh, one child. Uh, she's 15 years old. Yes. 15. You said she, right? Yes. Do you want to give her name? Sure, Leah. Leah, nice. Yeah. 15. Um, is she? Are you training her? And no. does she have an interest in boxing? No, she she has an interest in theater. She, theater. She, like, she likes the. The, the, the arts. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations to your daughter. Now, do you play the role as a father figure to anyone else other than your daughter? Well, yeah, I would say sure. Yeah, I mean, there's there's kids that come into the rock all the time. I mean, you know, it's, you know, you're, you know, the word of God says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they won't depart from it. So I have a responsibility as a Christian man to, to place the truth in the lives of every kid that comes in here. And sometimes... You know, they don't like the truth, you know, but but right. but over a period of years, the same guys who don't like the truth, they roll out, they come back in. They see they see me and many of the people here that, that serve here. Uh, we're still here with the same message of hope, of love. Uh, of, 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 and that's that's the that's the gospel message in purity. And, and kids need that. And when they understand that there's that they're more than conquerors, when they understand that there's no condemnation in them, when they understand that, that God has a purpose and a plan for their lives, despite they don't have their biological father with them, but they have their heavenly father. And once that person, that young kid, connects to the heavenly father, the, the word of God says that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. With them. Amen. Absolutely. Um, we're going to take one more song here. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to take one more song, and then we're going to wrap up our interview on this June 21st, 2015. You're tuned in to Hope for Philadelphia on WPEB 88.1 FM. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Now, we have established a boxing team, bar none, that, that's one of the best in the city of Philadelphia. We've had, we have many Golden Gloves champions. We have Junior Olympic champions. We have two, uh, we have three world champions. And three of our kids won, won the Ringside World Championship two, two years in a row. Out of all the kids that have come through our doors, and and uh, and many of the kids have won unbelievable trophies and, and medals and awards. There's one kid that stands out in, in, in my mind, and that is because he's now in Bible College. You know, one of the things that, that I, I really believe is that there's so many people that really that, that really can help make an investment in the lives of these young kids at between the ages of 10 and 22. And we feel as though that that um, when a person, if a person can't make it down uh, to to uh, participate in what we're doing on the front lines, we believe that people who uh, live around the country can make an investment in the lives of kids. We believe that any kid who comes into our ministry has an opportunity to change their lives around. And when somebody was sitting in their chair in Kansas City or, or, or Ohio or, or California, it don't matter. They can still invest and be a part of what God is doing in, in the heart of, of, of Kensington in, in the city of uh, Philadelphia. And we believe that, that it starts with the kid. And when a kid understands that he's not a throwaway, that he understands that he's not a zero in his life, that's when he becomes a, a, an amazing participant in the community.
morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to us as we continue and get, and get prepared to move on to the next hour of Hope for Philadelphia on WPB 88.1 FM. This is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Uh, if you want to call in and wish your father a happy Father's Day, please do so. Go ahead and call 215-472-0882. That's 215-472-0882. We have Buddy here from the Rock Ministries, which is located off of Kensington and Somerset, finishing our interview based off of boxing. I guess today's the topic is boxing and um, and Father's Day. We're kind, we kind of conjoined the two together. Um, so do you believe your ministry by name, uh, not by the na- by not by name, but by nature of the content, which is boxing ministry? Do you believe it had a role in the match of Mayweather and Pacquiao? Boxing ministry, do you believe, did you see that a lot and within a fight and the buildup of the fight? Well, I, I, didn't, I don't think I, I could say that I saw that. Our ministry, because it, the only thing it, it, it lacked is, you know, this ministry here, Rock Ministries of Philadelphia, is is way more than boxing. It's 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 the core of the gospel, and when these kids get the core of the gospel, that's the rock that they need. They need that solid rock, that foundation of Christ in their lives, that will that will give them the strength that they need to endure all of the adversities that they're facing in their lives. Listen. Kids in the inner city of Philadelphia. It says that by the time a kid in the inner city of any any city reaches the age of 18, there's a good chance that he's going to kill somebody, be killed, rob a bank, be involved in some kind of rape or something like that. Or, you know, and but we say that that when a kid is in Christ, those it'll, it'll never happen. Wow. And so to me, Amen. to me, that that's the epitome of. Of winning the fight, being being champions for Christ. Now, you know Mayweather and and Pacquiao. You know I don't know know them personally. Um, I from what I understand, they say that uh, Pacquiao saved now and he, and he and he believes in Christ and whatnot. And and, and you know so I, I don't know, but I can just say that they can have all the money they want. They can have all the fame they want. They could have the biggest bank account, the biggest houses, and they want. But if a person has doesn't have Christ, what does he have? What does he have? There's nothing wrong with material things. There's nothing wrong with stuff. But if you don't have... So when, when a kid comes into, into us, many of these kids are fatherless. And so what do we do? We give them... We introduce them to their Heavenly Father, who will never leave them, who will never forsake them, has a purpose and a plan for their lives. Amen. Amen. Um, the statement that, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but the statement that each boxer gives before the actual fight, uh, what is that called? Like they give us, uh, like they're on a stage and they give a, a statement right before the fight. Is that during uh, the week before the fight? The build uh, at the press conference? The press conference. So the press conference. So, well, yeah, I mean, it's right before the, the fight. They give, a, they give a, a basically, you know, they're asked questions and how they're going to, prevail in the fight, you know, what's going to be their strategy, and, you know, and... Did you, uh, did you hear Pacquiao's statement? Yes, I did. He says that God was going to deliver him. Is that right? Yes. Well, the, I love that, but here's the thing. If he would have said, if God wills, you know, if God wills, he will deliver you in my hand. So if it's up to God, Uh you know... You can't. I mean, to me, you know, I wouldn't want any of my athletes saying, listen, tell them that, that God's going to deliver that guy into your hands. Well, I don't know that. Exactly. I mean, how are you live in your life? You know, you know, what does God, you know, maybe there maybe there'll be more recognition for Christianity by him losing. I don't know. God's plan is way bigger than ours. I mean, you know, you know, so I don't you know. Pacquiao, you know, he's a, you know. He's a, he's a brilliant athlete. I mean, I, I love him. I lo- but but to me, when you say that God's going to deliver you into my hands, it's like it's a pretty bold statement, man. You know. But. Also, um, did you see uh, the T-shirt that Pacquiao had when he was when he was on his way to the ring? Did you see what it said on it? Well, I didn't. Yeah. What did it say? I I, th- I remember. What did it Jesus. say? Jesus. Oh yeah. Oh, I and- love that. I love that, man. I see a lot of a lot of athletes. They'll wear scripture on their trunks, and 
And, and I like it, you know. I, I mean, it, it's, it, I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I like to see people promote, promoting the gospel. I think it's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Um, so we actually collected uh, a lot of things that we saw on the radio from people from the radio, such as myself and other members of the team. We've uh, collected uh, multiple moments before the fight, during the fight, and after the fight that related to Christ. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so we're going to play it right now on Hope for Philadelphia. Take oh, a listen. Nice. Congressman in his own country, a man who believes it is his obligation to enter politics to help the people of his country. But more than anything, it's a man whose whole life is guided by his innate, tremendous love for God and who attributes all the success that he's had in life to God. We need more people in the world like Manny Pacquiao. The welterweight champion of the world, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Good afternoon, everybody. First, I would like to thank God for uh, giving us uh, a, a wonderful day, a beautiful day for us. And I want to thank you to all the, the sponsor, the promoter, uh, Floyd Mayweather Promotion, 
Top Rank Promotion and to all the sponsors and who helped this uh, this fight a lot. It's Bio, uh, Shield Time. Uh, they're helping a lot for this uh, this uh, this fight, and I want to thank uh, especially to the um, HBO for helping me um, since uh, when I fought here in America. I I was remember that my first fight in in America here in MGM against um, Lilo Hanulo Lidwaba. That was uh, 2001, June 23, 2001, undercard with. Uh, uh, Oscar de la Hoya and uh, Castillejo. And that was a long time ago, and since then, HBO are, are um, helping a lot to my career. And thank you to all the media and fans, uh, the press and media, uh, being there always. You know, every fight that I had, uh, promoting the fight, letting the people know that it's going to be a good fight, and um, all our success. In achievements in boxing is, you know, not on, only for us alone, but including you guys um, who are part of uh, big success and um, accomplish what we accomplish in boxing. And thank you. Um, I'd like to invite everyone to, to witness this this Saturday a good fight between uh, uh, Mayweather and, and Pacquiao. It's going to be a good fight and. There's a lot of a question in your minds that um, only God can answer us on Saturday. And, you know, I just want to, um, to let you know that um, everything that I have accomplished is God who gave me the strength. You know, I just, I just want to, to be an example and inspiration to everybody how my life before, uh, before I became a boxer. Um, I used to sleep in the street, you know, starving, hungry, and now I cannot imagine that the Lord raised me in this position and He blessed me this blessings that I cannot imagine that the boy that don't have food and sleeper and sleeping in the street that He raised me this level of life. And that's why I, I want to share to everyone. And this fight on Saturday, what our goal is to to give the fans enjoyment and satisfaction of our performance and entertain you guys that you will be happy on Saturday. Uh, both of us, uh, Floyd and I, we, we work hard. We've been working hard to to uh, to entertain you on Saturday to give a good fight on Saturday. But the most important thing, you know, I'm hoping that. You know, nothing personal, but we're just doing our job, we're doing our best in, in, on Saturday. You know, he's, I, I believe that he's, he's, he's going to do his best on Saturday, and I'm, I'm going to do my best on Saturday to, to uh, put our name in, in boxing history. But the most important thing, and I'm hoping that after the fight, we, have, uh, we can have a conversation with, with Floyd, you know, sharing my faith about God, you know. This, Nothing bad about that, you know, sharing my faith about God, how we, how we need to believe that we can inspire more people, especially those children are um, looking for, uh, for us, so, you know, uh, supporting us. So thank you. Um, I hope this, this fight is going to be not only uh, to entertain people, but to give an inspiration to all the people around the world and that there is God, you know, there is God that who can raise someone from nothing into something. Yes, Jesus is the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. God bless. Like I said before, this is not good versus evil. This is about uh, two fighters at the top of their game coming together, competing in one of the biggest events of all time. Um, you know, it's time to fight now. You know, you guys came out here to see excitement. You guys came out here to see a great event. And I think, that's what both competitors bring to the table, excitement. Um, the biggest fight in boxing history, and I'm a part of it, so that's a great thing, you know. Um, I'm just truly, truly blessed to be where I'm at. I feel good, I feel strong. And um, I'll see you guys Saturday, thank you.
<laughs> no, I hear you. Well, listen, you had some beef with Floyd about him, about him being uneducated and stuff like that. Today, his ex fiance filed a lawsuit claiming he pulled a gun on her. Is that acceptable? <laughs> I will pray for him. You pray for him? Yeah. That's good. Did he, did he invite you to Bible study? He said you wanted to do that after the fight. Well, you know, um, a lot of people try to turn a fight into good versus evil. And I didn't really, I didn't really care to entertain that. You know, um, you know, I believe in a, I believe in a, in a good man just like he do. You know, I pray, I pray and I love my family. And, um, you know, it's just that I didn't really appreciate everyone basically calling me, like, I like, this is the guy versus the devil. I mean, he's done a lot of bad in his life, and no one is perfect. He's, man, he has made mistakes, just like I've made mistakes. No one is perfect. But um, each and every day, we, we both need to grow and try to become um, better human beings. Ministries, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you. So we're going to ask you actually to pray for us. Pray and have a nice prayer for this boxing slash Father's Day uh, tribute that we're doing on Hope for Philadelphia. Sure. And Father, I do thank you for the, these this, this radio station, Hope for Philadelphia, Lord. Hope for Philadelphia. It's a wonderful uh, outreach to the community, Lord. And and Lord, more importantly, Lord, we thank you for every child, Lord, whether they have a, a father or not, Lord. We know that you are ultimately the Heavenly Father, Lord. And I pray in the name of Christ, Lord, that uh, Lord, that you would use ministries like this around the city, Lord, to draw kids to you with sports, with activities, Lord, with mentors, with, uh, uh, with men who are, want to come alongside and, and help these children, Lord, uh, who don't have a father. And, and Father, I thank you for the dads who are towing the line, who are standing in the gap, and who are representing you, Lord. Your word says to train up a child in the way that they should go. When they grow old, they will not depart from it. I pray, Lord, yes, Lord. that every father in the city of Philadelphia would adhere to that scripture, and not only hear it, Lord, as your word says, not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do uh, for this uh, radio station and, and through this radio station, Lord. I just pray for the leaders and and all the people that you've assembled together to, with the vision to, uh, to make this radio station uh, the most successful uh, radio station in the country, Lord. We don't want to just, I don't want to say neighborhood, country, Lord. Lord, you can do Hallelujah. it, Lord. Have your will. And it's in Jesus' name that I ask this. Amen. We are, we are humbled, we are honored that we are here in just an incredible place. There's no other place that we would rather be than right here. This is a neighborhood that's full of prostitutes, it's full of drug abuse, it's, it's full of, of hustlers, it's full of fatherless homes, um, it's full of young men who are embracing a, a thug lifestyle, it's you know full of young women who are, are emulating the, the lives of stars that, that leads to total unrighteousness. And here God has said, here you are, here's where I want you to be, and here's how I'm going to use you and then what we're seeing is we're seeing these young people come into our ministry and and they're coming into relationship with Jesus Christ and they're being changed they're walking through the doors one way and they're going out the door another way now our belief and what we understand is that as as time goes on and as these young people's lives are changed and they grow and get strong on the Word of God and just a continual feeding of the Word of God that they're gonna have a complete impact not just in this neighborhood, but throughout the entire city of Philadelphia. So buddy, um, very quickly before we wrap up this interview, 
give everybody your contact information. If anybody, if any youth or anyone in general would like to get in contact with you or the ministry, if anybody would like to become a member of the ministry, what's the contact information? Yeah, it's Rock Ministries of Philadelphia. You can go, we have a website, uh, www.rockministries.us or .com. Uh, you can certainly uh, check out our, our website. We're at 2755 Kensington Avenue. Our phone number is 215-739-3927. So if you guys want to come and, and check us out, we, we, would, we would love to see you.